Big time message. You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to find my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And it's time to get the series review started. y'all we are on season four of the Mahabharat yes season four and I'm gonna go if this was a longer season I'm gonna go over like the first eight episodes because there was like 19 so we're gonna do half and last we left off you know that mean prince that's what I like to call him the mean prince he well he did kill Beam but Beam came back to life but you know the blind king he always wanted to make him like the heir he wants to make him the next king and all that but now that he finds out that he tried to done kill the beam, he's like, oh no, I gotta do something about this. We gotta stop it. And you know he wanted to, Drona to, to train his sons, right? He wanted to Drona and Drona was like, well, they gotta come out here away from the castle to be trained. And then and the blind king was like, oh no, they can't go away. Well, now he's done changed his mind. He done changed his mind because he's like, oh no, I, I got this mean boy over to, trying to kill my brother's sons. We gotta do something about this. So he sends them off with the Pandavas. They all go off with the Drona to be trained and everything. And right away, you know that mean, the mean prince, he, he tries to get something over them already. All right, in the beginning, he has his little tent set up. His uncle got him a little little uh, bachelor pad, it looks like, you know. And then he made, befriends Drona's son, who, you know, got that crystal in his head. So he, they, he already gets him on his side. So you're like, oh, already the, the meme prince is already doing some stuff. But you can tell. Those those hundred brothers, they ain't used to living like uh, up in the forest roughing it. The Pandavas are. They was with, the, you know, Pandu up in the forest in the exile. They're used to the forest life and living in the hard times. But they even showed that scene. Remember the, the first night there, Pandavas are soundly sleeping. And then there's all the, the hundred brothers. They're all scratching and, and bugs biting them. They're like, oh, we, we used to the com comfy palace life. We ain't used to this life. Right away, y'all, you can just tell Arjun stands out from them all. He's got those archery skills and Drona already. He was like, oh, Arjun, you're going to be the one, right? He's like, yeah, I'm a, you're going to be my special student right here because he's got the skills. And, and not only the skills, you can always tell, like, he has the passion. He has the passion to learn and just, he wants to be like the greatest. I, I know I'm biased for the Arjun. But then some twists come because they have this, like he's over there practicing his archery. Then out of nowhere, this arrow comes out and, and Arjun's like, where did this arrow come? It like splits his arrow right in the middle. He's like, who did that? So he goes chasing it. And he finds this boy up, like, living up in the cave that's been training for archery and they don't even know it. He's been watching Drona teach. So he's like, he loves the Drona. He, oh, he loves him. He's been watching him. He's like, oh, please teach me and everything. But he's kind of a little creepy because he's been over there watching Drona train and, and, and wanting, you know, to learn from stuff. But then he made, like, this weird little statue up in the, where he lives of Drona. I was like, all right. That's a little stockish, you know? I just felt, I was like, that's a little stockish because you, I, I understand you want to him to be your teacher and all that, but to go back and make like the little statue, that's a little weird. Let's take a look at, at this scene right here because this is a little part right when Arjun finds him after he chases him. Y'all ready? Let's go. There's the statue. <laughs> Oh, I mean, he like that. And then he finds him. Watch, there he is. He finds him. And he's like, why you got this creepy statue of me? <laughs> Look at him. He's like, what is going on here? Why you got that creepy statue of me? He wasn't happy. I mean, I don't know how I would feel like if I came up and someone had the statue of me. I'd be like, all right, this. I don't know. I'll be like a little flattered, like, oh, okay, you like me that much. You got, you made me a, a statue of me, but still, that's a little creepy. And but the, you can just tell he's like, I want to be your student. Please teach me. I'll do anything. And then he comes back and he's like, Well, why don't you cut off your thumb? I was like, Well, why? Why? Why are you making him cut off his thumbs? I'm still 
confused about this because everybody's like, oh, you made him cut off his thumb because you didn't want him to be the best. You want our June to be a best. So you cut off his thumb. That's what everybody's thinking. That's what I was thinking. You want to cut off his thumb so he can't be the best archer like our June. Do you think that's why? But I'm like, still, he's a great teacher. Would he do that? Would he take a student that he promised, all right, I'll take you in. I'm going to teach you. But first, you got to cut off your thumb so you're not the best. That don't make sense to me. I feel like there's another reason, but I didn't really understand why. Maybe it'll tell us later on. So don't spoil nothing for me. Don't spoil it that if that's the reason. Then after that happened, after he made that boy cut off the thumb, that's when all the, the, the especially the Kuros, right? The hundred brothers, they were, they started getting like, oh, you got a favorite student in our June. Well, we're just going to leave. They were threatening. We're just going to leave then. You just got your favorite student over there making people cut off their thumbs for your favorite student. So then Jerome's son came back to him and then he was like, listen, they're about to leave. He was like, warned them. And remember what Drona was like, well, you know what? They want to leave first. Tell them to come meet me down by the river, wherever they were, the river and stuff, right? So he gets in that water. They all came. The, the Hundred Brothers, the Pandavas, all of them came watching. He gets in the water and here comes this big crocodile. That crocodile looked crazy. <laughs> he did. I was like, what is that crocodile? And then, so anyway, he's getting attacked by this crocodile. And this was like a test. I knew it. Well, after it happened, I knew it. <laughs> but he gets, and then who's the one that's going to save him? I even have a video of this. Y'all ready to do this? Because they're all standing watching him with this crocodile. Y'all ready to do this? Let's go. There he is. Look at that crocodile. And they're just standing. They're just standing there like, help. Who comes? Our Jew. That right there proves it. That right there proves it. He's like, he's the only one that's going to save me. Look at him. He gets that crocodile fighting it. The sun came later. I think the sun came. <laughs> and the sun was like, oh, look at him. He put a stick. The sun was like, oh, I better help too because that's my dad. After the fact, after Arjun's there fighting the crocodile. But look at that. You can tell he's proud of him. Mm. Look at that. You can tell he's proud of him. And that's why he proved a point. He's like, all oh, y'all standing on there, you you jealous of Arjun. You saying I'm I'm treating him better and all this. But look, when I'm in trouble, who's the one that jumped out to rescue me? Who's the bravest here, Arjun? Well, my son came later. My son, after Arjun's there punching the crocodile, my son came up in the, in the water like, all right, I'll help now. <laughs> he did. He's like, all right, I'm going to help now. Well, he's got it. He's got it. <laughs> but that just, it proved to them like, all right. Y'all want to say he's my favorite, but this is why. Because he's the bravest. He's the one out there jumping in the waters, fighting a crocodile, sticking sticks in there. I mean, that was smart. That was smart. It proved the point. They they closed their mouths after that. They did. And then, you know, here comes another great archer. They're always trying to test my, my boy Arjun's skills with his archery. First, the boy they made to cut off the thumb. Well, here comes another one. Here comes Karna with his great Karn with his great archery skills. I was like, ah, oh, another one. And he wants to be taught. He wants to be trained by Drona too. I was like, everybody thinks they could just come up here and be trained by the Drona with their great archery skills. But I mean, Karn has, he's got the great archery too. But what was it? Drona told him, he was like, well, you're not, I know they do with the class. And they was like, well, you're not the class to be trained by me, right? He was like, you're not, so you're going to have to go somewhere else. So he like turned Karn away. So Karn did, and did he send them? But Karn went to that one guy, Pesh. He's the one at the beginning. Remember with the Aunt Ambika when when she she wanted to revenge on the Bishma. So this is one of oh, and he trained Bishma too, right? He was the one that trained Bishma. So then Karn went to him, but he lied to him, right? He lied to him. Was like, oh no, I'm I'm one of these. You you can train me. He didn't. He he hid it. He hid it from him to be trained. But that guy trained him. I mean, so much he can do an arrow up in the sky and the sun comes out. <laughs> that's how much he trained him. But you know, once you lie, once you have a lie, that's going to stick with you. And you ain't going to ever be able to run from it. I mean, 
You don't think that, what's his name, Parashuma? That's a, Parashuma's going to find out. He's this great, he moved the rocks for him to come out wh where he lives. Like, and they just go back by, like he's got, he don't think he's going to figure out you lied to him. And he eventually does. I'm surprised so late. I'm surprised he figured out so late. But that was crazy how he figured out. Because remember, he would, they were doing their training and stuff. And, and, and Karn was sitting there and, and that, that parachute, he comes and like, he was tired and he's like, rest here. And then that crazy bug crawls up crawl, hit Karn's leg and bites him and he's bleeding and dripping blood. And, but he didn't move because his teacher was there. But that Parmashuma woke up and he saw that and he's like, what? He's like, how can you do that? How did you do that? You're being, you're being eaten alive by this bug, but you didn't move because, you know, I'm on your lap because you didn't want to wake me. And that's how he figured it out. I'm just saying that's pretty in intuitive. I wouldn't have figured that. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Do you not feel that? Is your leg numb? Did your leg go to sleep when I was laying on it? What's it going on? He was like, you're not who you say you are. And that's what, how he figured it out. Because that bug was in here dripping the blood. And then, I mean, I kind of felt bad for Karn. But that's what you're going to get. Karn lied to him. So then he's like, you got to go. I promise never to teach you. But he even said that. He's like, if you would have just been, didn't he say that? If you would have been honest with me in the beginning, I could have said, yeah, I could have found somebody who would teach, you know, someone of your class. I guess it's the class. If you would have just been truthful with me, but you wasn't, you lied. Now go. Now go. He, and then he said, I done broke my oath. So you lied, making him d done. But I'm, I'm saying, if you didn't know for sure that that was who he says he was, how, I don't know. Does that still make you break your oath? I guess if you find out about it. So that's kind of how that ended, right? He just sent Carter away. He's like, you ain't who you say you are. You made me break my oath. You shouldn't have lied, which is true. So things are coming. Things are coming. This is the first eight episodes of the uh, season four, and I just can't wait to see it going because I'm all, you know, now that Pandavas are there and they're getting their training and stuff, I am so into it. I can't stop. I haven't watched the rest of season four, but we'll have the, that review coming soon this week. All right. So look out for it. Let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, and all that. Until next time. Mwah!